All right, we'll go through in separate videos and talk about <clears throat> the three different types of acid-base titrations. That way it's easier for you guys to go back and review the different types. So this first one, we're adding 30 milliliters of 0.5 molar hydrochloric acid, and it's being titrated with 0.5 molar sodium hydroxide. So you'll notice in this one that we know the concentrations of both particular uh, acids and bases, and it is a strong acid and a strong base. So this isn't your typical titration where we're finding an unknown concentration. Rather, we're just going to go through it piecemeal to see how the calculations are done. So we're going to find the initial pH of the 0.5 molar hydrochloric acid. Then what's the pH going to be after we add 15 milliliters of sodium hydroxide, 30 milliliters of sodium hydroxide, and 45 milliliters of sodium hydroxide? So with HCl, since that's a strong acid, and sodium hydroxide, since that's a strong base, that means this guy is going to completely ionize, and this guy will completely ionize. So what that means for us then is when you add these together, the chloride is going to stay ionized, and the sodium is going to stay ionized. So really, the net ionic equation, the only thing that's changing is going to be the H plus is going to combine with the hydroxide and produce water. So this right here is our net ionic equation. That's all we're concerned with. That's what makes the net ionic equations or the titrations for strong acids, strong bases so great. All right, part A, so find the initial pH, and that's calculated using the concentration of HCl. So this one should be fairly easy. Remember the pH is equal to the negative log of the H plus concentration. And we know that the H plus concentration was uh, 0.5. And so that means the pH of this guy is going to be 0 0.30. So very low pH. This is a fairly concentrated hydrochloric acid solution. Okay, the next parts where we're going to start doing some stoichiometry. So we're going to find the pH after we add 15 milliliters of titrant. So titrant, that's what you're titrating with, and we are titrating hydrochloric acid with sodium hydroxide. So this is after we add 15 milliliters of the sodium hydroxide. So I'll do this one in two steps. Uh, the first step is going to be to find the moles of H plus and OH that reacted. So we added, we started with this hydroxide, I'm sorry, H pluses, and we added hydroxide. So we're going to find out how many moles of HCl were in there initially and how many moles of NaOH were added to the solution. And to find the moles of HCl, we had 0 0.30 liters of the solution, the hydrochloric acid solution, and there was 0.5 moles of HCl for every one liter. And since it's a strong acid, it goes just straight like that. Don't gotta do any KA. And that means we had point or zero point zero one five moles of HCl or moles of H plus. So that Cl isn't gonna really matter. Do the same thing for the sodium hydroxide. So we had we added point zero one five liters and I'm sorry, this number up here should be 0 0.0. That's 0 0.015 liters of the solution. And there was 0 0.50 moles of sodium hydroxide. Let's just go ahead and call that hydroxide. For every one liter, And so that means we added 0 0.0075 moles of OH minus. All right, so we started with 0 0.015 moles of H plus in that solution. We added 0 0.0075 moles of hydroxide. Let's see what the new pH is going to be. Okay, we'll use kind of an ice table. It's ice, it's initial change final though in this case because there's no equilibrium. We're going to use this to help us find out what the new pH is going to be. So initially we started with 
zero one five moles of H plus and point zero zero seven five moles of hydroxide. Those two are going to react, and there's not going to be any equilibrium, so they're going to go completely to uh, products, considering who our limiting reagent is. So since we have less hydroxides than we do H pluses, that means we're going to run out of hydroxides first. So both of these are going to decrease by 0 0.0075. And since they react at a one-to-one -one ratio, that means they're going to combine to form 0 0.00. 75 moles of water. So after this all goes through its stuff, we're going to have zero moles of hydroxide left because all of it's going to react with H+, and we'll be left with 0 0.0075 moles of H+. And so after we've added the titrant, we know our new H+, uh, number of moles, but that's not going to help us for pH. We've got to get that into uh, concentration. And so the concentration of H plus is going to be that 0 0.0075 moles divided by the volume, and it's not the 0 0.030 moles or liters that we started with. We have to add together these two volumes. So since we started with 30 milliliters of this, we added 15 milliliters of this, that means we have 45 milliliters total. So that would be 0 0.045 liters of uh, solution. So the concentration of H plus is now going to be 0.17 molar. Okay. And so then the pH of the solution would just be the negative log of that concentration. So the pH of would equal the negative log of 0.17, which gives us a new pH of 0.77. So we raise the pH from the initial 0 0.30 to 0.77 with the addition of 15 milliliters of hydroxide. Okay, the next step we don't need to do very many calculations for, we can just kind of think about it. So we're going to find the pH after 30 milliliters of sodium hydroxide were added. And so this 30 milliliters is not an additional 30 milliliters from the last slide. It's We added the 15 in the last slide. We added an additional 15. So now we're at 30 milliliters total of sodium hydroxide added. So we started with 30 milliliters of HCl. Okay, we started with 30 milliliters of 0.5 molar HCl. And we've now added 30 milliliters of 0.5 molar sodium hydroxide. That means at this point we have added the same concentration, the same amounts, our number of moles of H plus now equals our moles of OH minus. So we have reached the equivalence point. Since the equivalence point for a strong acid, strong base, when H plus equals OH minus, all we have left in the solution is H2O, which is water, and water has a pH of 7, neutral. That means our equivalence point in this case is going to be 7. So H plus equals OH minus. That produces nothing but water. So we have a pH of 7. The spectator ions in this case, in the case of a strong acid, strong base, the spectator ion, which is NaCl, or Na plus and Cl minus, they're not going to affect the pH at all because they're the conjugates of a strong acid, strong base, so they do not adjust the pH like other salts would. So if this was a quantitative titration and we had an unknown, this would be the point where we could solve for that unknown because we can see that the H plus equals the OH minus. But since it's not really a quantitative titration, it's just a qualitative, we're going to go through and add a little bit more sodium hydroxide just so we can see what happens. So now we're going to find the pH after 45 milliliters of the titrant were added. So we were going to add, we started with 15, added another 15, got to the equivalence point. Now we're going to add another set of 15 and bring it up to 45 milliliters of uh, sodium hydroxide. So we'll just consider this if we had started with zero and now we just added 45 milliliters total. So how many moles of HCl were in, in the solution initially? So back at the very beginning. We already calculated that a couple slides ago and we found that it was 0 0.015 moles of H+. Plus. So we'll just keep that number, no need to calculate it again. <clears throat> now let's figure out how many moles of sodium hydroxide we have added. 
so 0 0.045 liters. And there is still 0.5 moles of hydroxide for every one liter. Cancel out liters. So that means we've added 0 0.023 moles of hydroxide. So let's find out then what the pH is. So initially we had 0 0.015 moles of H+, and we just added 0 0.023 moles of OH-. Now, if you take a look at this hydroxide, there's more moles of hydroxide than there is H+. So H+, has now become our limiting reagent. And make note, so if we have more moles of OH- than we do H+, the pH should be what? That's right, basic. So this is going to decrease by 0 0.015. This will also decrease by 0 0.015. That's going to create for us 0 0.015 moles of water. So H plus is going to be 0. OH minus will be 0 0.008 moles. And the volume, if we started with 30 milliliters, and we added 45 milliliters. Our new volume is going to be 75 milliliters, or 0 0.075 liters. So let's find our concentration of OH minus. Since it's going to be 0 for our H plus, then we got to find it with the OH minus. And so that would be 0 0.008 moles divided by 0 0.075 liters, which would give us a concentration of 0. 0.1 molar. So if we negative log that, we're not going to get the pH, we're going to get the pOH. And the pOH in this case would be 0.1 molar, or I'm sorry, uh, 1.0. And since we want the pH, that would be 14 minus 1, which would mean that the new pH is 13.0. All right, so this is kind of important to note. If you notice, after we added 15 milliliters of the sodium hydroxide beyond the equivalence point, the pH shot up to 13. So it's not like it did a steady increase from the beginning to the end. It does a pretty sharp change, a pretty drastic change once we add those different guys. And that creates a very uh, characteristic curve that looks like this. So if we take a look at this graph, this is an acid-base titration curve. This is a very, very common picture that you're going to see a lot of. On the y-axis here we have the pH, so we can monitor how the pH changes as we add the titrant. And then down here we're looking at the volume of sodium hydroxide that was added. So we can trace here as we add the sodium hydroxide what does the pH do. So this, the initial pH was 0.3 and as we added the sodium hydroxide, it steadily went up. So the change with that 15 milliliters that we added the first time, it went from 0.3 to 0 0.7, 0 0.77. So not a huge change with that addition of 15 milliliters. Then we added another 15 milliliters to get it up to 30. And what did it do? It shot all the way up to 7. Okay, so it's not a steady asymptotic curve. It goes gradual, gradual, gradual until you get to the equivalence point and shoots up. This is characteristic of the fact that a pH is based upon a log. So this is a logarithmic curve. Then we added an additional 15 milliliters beyond that, and at 45 milliliters, the pH shoots up to about 13. Okay, so this range where the pH is 7 is a very, very tiny, tiny range. So when you do a titration, this is why you have to add it slowly because you can very, very easily miss this point. Look at this. So if you add about, what is that, 25 milliliters of the titrant and then you add additional 5 milliliters beyond that, you get to the equivalence point. And if you were to add too much and just go barely beyond the equivalence point, your pH is going to shoot way up to 13. Okay, so you need to be very careful when you do titrations. So the shape of the slope that you see oops, that you see right here, 
and right here is characteristic of a strong acid, strong base. Also, the fact that your equivalence point, okay, which would be smack in the middle of the, of the steep climb. So if you look between here and here, as it makes that ascent from acidic to basic, the pH, or the middle of that point right there, so the dead center, that would be your equivalence point. Okay, and your equivalence point for a strong acid, strong base, has to fall right on 7. So if you were shown a titration chart like this one, you should be able to identify this as a strong acid, strong base, because of this gradual curve right here, this almost flat line right there and right there, and then the equivalence point right at 7.